There we go. Okay, I got it eventually. Okay, right. Uh, thank you ever so much for joining today. Uh, episode six, Teacher Talking Time. So today, um, just had my lunch. So today, a couple of things that I wanted to have a look at. First of all, um, a thing about teaching gestures, I guess, online. The other thing that I'd like us to look at is, excuse me, is um, uh, various websites that um, uh, I've looked at over the coming week, over the past week. And then also um, have a look at uh, some aspects of teaching and answer any questions that you may have as well. So that, that would be great. Um, right, let's begin. Um, so today, um, let's have a look at uh, some of the websites that um, I've got. So the first website that I have, uh, I should have checked this first of all. Um, so. There we go. All right. So the first uh, website or blog that I'm looking at is the Oxford Australia blog. And here it was about a sort of reading program that they had sort of reporting on how the school or the, the um, how student achievement and attainment improved over there. And uh, and um, Rennie, thank you for joining. Uh, thanks for your question. What am I eating? I'm actually eating. Um, let me go back to our main source. There we go. So I'm eating a, a sandwich. Um, tuna and mayonnaise. Anyway, let's have a look at um, this thing here. Um, so the website that I was looking at um, is uh, this post here about student achievement and how student achievement improved over a period of time in relation to a reading program and I've come up uh, across a similar um, activity or idea in language teaching um, and uh, essentially um, I went to a talk a couple of years ago about a person who devised a reading program for their students and every Friday for half an hour the students would read uh, a passage or a book um, and then you know have that time where everything's off phones are off distractions are away and they will just spend half an hour just reading and then it will develop and enhance and, you know, having a, a reading time, I suppose, with the students and having the opportunity for students to share new vocabulary, things that have that they've read and that sort of thing. Um, anyhow, um, it was quite an interesting thing here about rigorous reading and student attainment. And uh, yeah, I, I found this article kind of resonated with me because of my experience of uh, uh, running a sort of um, uh, a book project, a sort of project with my students um, a couple of years ago where I asked the students to go to the, the library and choose like a graded reader or a novel if they were feeling a bit more um, ambitious and read that book and after a couple of weeks, prepare a presentation about the background of what they've read, the story, etc. Any new vocabulary, anything that they've learned about the book. And um, it was quite a it was quite a success. The students really enjoyed talking about that, what they were reading. They, were, they really enjoyed engaging with that that book um, and also sharing their experiences, their thoughts and ideas and that that was quite an interesting insight and definitely one thing that I would recommend for 
others to consider. Anyhow, um, let's move on. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions with regards to teaching or reading or anything that I'm covering in today's live stream, then please feel free to post in the comments and or bring your um, uh, chat up straight away. So for example, if I go here, uh, I can click on someone's uh, chat. Um, uh, Rene asked, oh, what are you eating? Um, a nice uh, sandwich, tuna and mayo. Anyway, um, let's return back to our website. So quite an interesting article, blog post. Um, and the second website that I wanted to look at is related to um, adapting materials for the online um, environment, online lessons. And Sandy here, Sandy Millen, very useful. Uh, I really like her, her posts and that sort of thing. Um, and this one here, um, I found it kind of reminded me of how um, materials are developed for a face-to-face -face environment. Normally we, we would get Microsoft Word and we will prepare a lesson based on Microsoft Word, usually in portrait um, mode. So for example, if I have a notebook, you essentially have it in portrait like this. Um, but what's recommended nowadays for online environment is maybe um, a landscape horizon, horizontal mode and then this will allow a bit more opportunity for the students to see the space because their monitors are in landscape rather than in portrait. Um, so uh, a couple of things here. Um, uh, Sandy gave a, a sort of webinar with International House um, and a couple of questions on her abstract okay and um, quite an interesting um, post about what she looked at uh, in terms of her uh, her um, conference and her webinar and uh, she looked at how to adapt online material um, and let's see oh, we're in full screen mode which doesn't work very well um, but let me just zoom in and this will be a bit easier um, and you can see here um, how she developed her um, conference and as you can see she's looking at you know how um, adaptable are you with the material do you adapt everything or do you have that balance in between of either using the materials exactly as they are or do you adapt um, everything um, and an upcoming lesson so some nice thoughts um, really interesting webinar um, looking at her slides here um, and what she calls um, backwards planning. Now backwards planning is uh, thinking about what you want the students to achieve and so by the end of the lesson students will have looked at this grammar point or they will have learnt this this new grammar form and working backwards on how do I get my students there um, what do I want to include to make sure the students get to that that aim or that achievement um, so nice process of backwards planning um, so that that's quite good now um, let's go a bit further on um, reasons why you need to adapt materials evaluative processes Mm hmm areas to think about okay you've got for example English file I like English file um, I find it a useful book um, some nice material 
and uh, uh, essentially looking at this book and thinking about how will I adapt it and obviously for my online lessons I started looking at because I had to go through a chapter each week um, so it was quite quick quite intense but making sure that I was able to cover the key points and uh, essentially what I ended up doing with English file with my students um, was to try and get through that um, unit um, and you'd either have to drop something, remove it, adapt it and that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> okay Renny, I'll see you later. Um, and thank you very much. I'll enjoy my sani. Um, yeah, so quite an interesting insight into what to do and how to adapt the material. And obviously thinking about what, what you want your students to achieve at the end of it. Um, and um, towards the end of the webinar, I suppose she looked at um, how you want your lesson either remotely to look do you want it things to be moving do you want things to be static um, are you teaching or are you testing is it heads up heads down teacher in control students in control there's that sort of um, balance in between isn't there um, and then a few books uh, recommendations so really interesting um, webinar that um, Sandy wrote here um, and you know her blog posts and that sort of thing and so there we go okay so definitely recommend Sandy's uh, website really useful website the next one on the uh, topic mm, on the topic of webinars and that sort of thing there was a an event the and I saw this pop up on uh, Twitter recently uh, the ACEIA online conference um, not entirely sure what ACEIA stands for um, but let me have a look the annual conference in education and international something I don't know Okay, so it's a, a Spanish um, conference. The Association um, de Centros de something or other. I can't pronounce my Spanish isn't very good, so apologies there. Um, anyhow, so uh, AC, ACEIA, ACEIA online conference. So it wasn't necessarily a physical conference like previous years due to the pandemic and that sort of thing so that's understandable um, and what I like is Spongy LT so uh, another website another blogger English language teacher that I'd recommend and uh, um, he talks about attending the uh, annual conference uh, albeit online and some of the uh, things that he um, uh, looked at and that sort of thing. So surviving and thriving um, uh, during and post pandemic or post lockdown. Um, and uh, quite an interesting insight into um, the challenges faced by uh, teachers and managers nowadays of um, uh, in a post pandemic post uh, lockdown environment where there's other challenges that uh, schools and educators face um, and then uh, this person wrote about their own uh, session increasing examiner reliability through exam moderation workshops um, uh, there was another look at um, observations and looking at observations formal observations do's and don'ts and 
what observers expect. So very important, um, particularly for um, those that are thinking about the CELTA. Um, so let me just put that to the side. I think hopefully you can see all that. Um, and uh, very useful um, things to consider when you're doing the CELTA and being observed on the CELTA. So recycling language, um, correcting and improving and practicing pronunciation, recording and acting upon emergent language, making the lesson learner-centered rather than teacher-centered. Um, uh, and uh, the key one, similar to what we looked at, um, adapting the book. Um, adapting the material, not going and just going through the book um, as, you know, as some would, I suppose. Uh, getting students on their feet, getting them moving, connecting with the students, smiling, encouraging, etc. So some nice um, things to consider if you're on the course of... Uh, uh, going for the CELTA or if you're going through a process of um, working for a new organization and you have some um, observations coming up, formal observations. So a couple of things for you to consider here. OK, right. Um, let's go back to our pop up chat. So we had uh, uh, Rene, uh, unfortunately. She's had to go, um, but thank you ever so much for your uh, uh, nice comment. Really appreciate it. Um, very good. Um, I'll see you next time, I hope. Um, anyhow, um, let's return back to our website. So um, here, um, some ideas about observations, definitely pre celta post celta delta formal observations within your organization a couple of key points to uh, consider um and then finally a couple of basics uh and then there was quizzes puzzles and other challenges how do games make you feel um, collaborative competitive games and uh, word search guess the jumbled word arts interesting i like this um i've not really come across jumbled words i suppose um and you can see how uh, students or you know students could use that um quite a useful um idea it requires a little bit of preparation i suppose within an online environment if we're teaching online and we're using this vocabulary trying to introduce the vocabulary that in this creative and um interesting way um but i i like it uh so <clears throat> i wonder how easy it is uh and if i can find the website that they used um No, can't see it. Uh, matching activities. I guess the mistake. Yeah. Oh, some nice ideas here. So definitely have a look at this website. It gives you some inspiration um, in terms of what you could use in your day-to-day um, -day teaching if it's online or face-to-face. And inclusivity, etc. So, um, yeah, ha have a look at this. I'll share the link in the chat. And if you've got any ideas or questions, please feel free to post your questions or ideas in the um, in the chat. Excuse me. Right. Now, um, let's have a look at um, a book that I tend to go back to from time to time, um, particularly about 
classroom management and one book that I tend to look at is this one here classroom management techniques um, by Scrivener um, really useful book um, goes through the entirety of um, uh, classroom management in a way and divides certain aspects of classroom management from the learner the student the classroom um, so here you got um, it divided up into different sections not sure if you can see that classroom teacher learners and then moving on what other chapters do we have uh, interventions facilitating interaction establishing and maintaining appropriate behavior and the lessons themselves so quite a lot to take on board there and um, one thing that kind of popped up you know because I tend to look at this and I think about what I'm doing and you know what would I do differently one thing that um, is included in the book are gestures and if you've been involved with uh, teaching from time to time um, you will find yourself using gestures in a way quite naturally particularly when students level are you know their English level is quite low then you have to overcompensate with certain gestures and you know if you're doing a sort of video as well I do this to I don't know it's just a, a gesture that I tend to do um, and certain things um, are also important within an online environment so if we're teaching online the use of gestures are, are vital um, so for example um, uh, you know I tend to put my hand to my ear you know or if I have my headphones on I tend to tap to the side and uh, then you know like mm, I can't hear you tap 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 uh, that, that's what I tend to use um, or tend to do during an online lesson and uh, other things you know I scratch my head if uh, something's unclear or you know um, go mm. um, but there's also certain other gestures as well so you know in a physical classroom say like together 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 like two 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 which is great but then in an online environment you can't really put two 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 together unless it's in breakout rooms and it's kind of done for you anyway um, and one thing that I've noticed when it's online and if you have discussion questions for students is um, the fact of using Skype uh, so or, or Zoom let's say Zoom for this matter if you're using Zoom, you'll, you'll be put into a breakout room and everything's done aut automatically for you. Then, um, you know, the fact of, okay, together, you need to focus on what the students are going to be doing in their breakout rooms because it's very difficult to monitor what they're actually doing when you're not there uh, remotely. Um, and one good update with zoom is the ability to share your screen to all breakout rooms which is great so if you've not updated zoom um, yet then i would recommend that you update zoom um, because it has that um, share to all breakout rooms function um, you know you click on share and up pops up um, you know certain windows or applications that you want to share to your students and um, one is share to breakout rooms um, so if you've got discussion questions I've always been asking students to take a photo or to take a screenshot of the questions um, and then discuss them in their breakout rooms the other way around it for me was to um, go from the PowerPoint that I'd be using, uh, get the questions, the conversation questions, copy them, go into the breakout room and then paste them in the breakout room so that students were able to discuss together if they didn't take a, a photo or if they didn't, you know, um, take a screenshot. 
so there's that element around it but now now with this update you don't have to worry too much about um, have the students actually got the conversation questions because there was a time you know once or twice where the students didn't have time to take a photo or screenshot and I put them in a breakout room automatically anyway in terms of online gestures um, there's very little that you could use um, I suppose the common ones are you know like this so again um, or or can't hear you the the technological issues um, the teachers or students may face um, but anyway it, it's interesting anyhow some common gestures from this book include um, organizing so you know organizing students like that or you know getting to pairs pairs I I tend to say two 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 that sort of thing and we've got uh, Eric here <laughs> hi Eric um, thanks for joining you haven't missed much I suppose you've only missed me eating my sandwich at the moment but welcome any questions feel free to put it in the comments and I'll, I'll cover it but uh, for um, ease of reference um, I was looking at a couple of websites um, blog posts uh, transforming student achievement through like a reading program uh, how to adapt materials for lessons or online lessons now and then uh, a, an online event a conference that occurred over uh, the weekend I, I guess or um, just before the weekend um, and uh, th this blog post was really useful definitely well worth it um, so have a look I, I've put the link in the chat so for those that are uh, interested please feel free to have a look at that blog post okay right and now we're going into gestures online gestures and that sort of thing and a book that I always tend to refer to classroom management techniques so there's a variety of different gestures one for organizing the classroom and giving instructions and uh, for classroom interaction now in a physical classroom you can you know have to go shh or listen listen or ah oh, yeah ah oh, too noisy in an online environment it's very quick you can mute all the students when you're going to give a instruction to all the students um, so there's no issues with regards to um, noise I suppose noise happening in the classroom um, but when it comes down to um, when the students have to work or when the students have to discuss together then there may be an issue that students aren't really talking or interacting so well one issue that I've encountered recently is the fact that the students you know have a group of uh, students and the students aren't really discussing together um, I give them the conversation topic but then they don't tend to take those questions and run with it they rely or they you know they rely on the teachers input or they don't want to interact they don't want to um, provide any uh, insight ideas um, and I suppose that's the issue within an online environment um, and how much do I um, get involved as a teacher or do I just step back a bit and allow the students to have that space naturally um, normally in an online environment I would step back a little bit 
until the students are ready to to communicate and you know uh, discuss together um, but it's always difficult having that uh, balance between how much do you provide for the students and how much do the students provide and you know I'm, I'm of the era of teacher talk time has to go down uh, despite the name of our live stream <laughs> teacher talking time has to go down um, and student talking time has to increase um, and I believe that's uh, really a, a useful aspect of um, uh, communicative uh, approach to teaching so when the students aren't interacting when the students aren't um, contributing then I find it quite difficult because I don't want to fill that silence and again sometimes the students aren't necessarily ready to contribute um, and it takes time you have to be incredibly patient um, anyhow so that that's where I'm at with uh, this particular group of students and we'll see we'll have to see I I hope we all hope in the end um, and I'm sure things will improve and develop as time goes by now um, let's see um, in terms of other gestures there's not really much else that you could do you know you can um, in a classroom you have handouts to give you could say okay one handout two handout student a student b those sort of gestures but in a physical class in an online classroom um, it's kind of different and I did try and do this sort of jigsaw activity where two groups of students had two different tech or the same text but different elements missing they had to ask group a what was here and what was that and vice versa um, to get them discussing and asking and answering questions and um, negotiating the language and the spelling and and it worked out quite well but it took a lot of scaffolding developing demonstrating until the students were like ah this is what I do um, in a physical environment it would be very simple I've done jigsaw reading tasks and reading and writing tasks um, many times before but uh, in an online environment it can be quite difficult to set up and you know you're lost because you don't have those gestures you can't demonstrate um, so much um, in such a short time it's it takes a long while till students um, recognize what what's expected so in terms of an online environment I would always urge uh, teachers to be patient um, because uh, an online environment seems very um, uh, long um, what would normally take 10 minutes in a physical classroom um, is uh, uh, multiplied in an online classroom um, so yeah now let's see uh, bear with me got a few comments here which I'm gonna remove um, there we go right um, okay so that's where I am with gestures and online environment um, and it'll be interesting to know your insight, your thoughts and ideas with regards to uh, remote teaching and the use of gestures on an online platform um, as well. Now, one thing that I wanted to look at was the use of error correction in um, uh, and feedback in uh, online teaching. Bear with me so our, our work as teachers has to rely upon um, using um, uh, 
uh, or teaching students English and responding to what they uh, have uttered or what they've written, what they've produced and correcting them where necessary. Now, in a physical classroom, I would walk around with my notebook and I would make note of all the different, you know, some good language and some um, uh, language which needs improving. Um, and to a degree now within an online environment, um, I would write, you know, I usually write down uh, a lot of ideas um, and some language that uh, needs to be improved upon. So, for example, um, I've got one here, not sure if you can see that I've underlined um, certain elements of the student's pronunciation. Um, and they had, um, you know, like chemistry, but they pronounced it chemistry. Um, and within an online environment, more so, it's so important that you provide the feedback in terms of pronunciation, in terms of grammar, vocabulary, this sort of thing. Um, because without any feedback to the students, they'll find it incredibly difficult. Um, so always important to consider when it's down to online teaching to provide that feedback, that necessary feedback towards the um, one part of your, your lesson. Um, usually I tend to divide it up. So if I have a lesson, for example, um, let me get my material up. So, for example, IELTS, IELTS speaking. And imagine I've got my, I'm focusing on IELTS speaking. I, I have my discussion questions here. Normally towards the end, there's a discussion um, just below. Let's just bring that up. And so you can see here, um, I would normally ask the students these questions, make a note online with what they're saying. And so, you know, I would type in what they've uttered, good or bad language. And then when I've finished my notes, I'll go through it with the student and provide them with some more vocabulary or get them to correct themselves and uh, also look at some um, phrases or expressions or phrasal verbs and that sort of thing which may help their fluency or uh, speaking yeah um, so whenever you have a discussion questions with your students always important to build in and factor in feedback for those discussion questions because if you don't have the feedback the students will just find it getting a bit boring and not really having any value because they're not being corrected and you know um, some of my students have and you have to strike up that balance of correct correction as well and um, many of my students have uh, said well I want feedback on my speaking I want to know the errors that I'm making and so I can improve my speaking my vocabulary and that sort of thing and um, you have to strike that balance between not correcting too much and then um, dissuading them from um, speaking and not correcting too little um, so you have to try and find a, a careful balance between either um, if you're too critical, if you 
you're correcting every single sentence or every single phrase that the student is saying, then this will have a negative effect on students' confidence. Um, and they will hesitate. It won't come out as naturally as, as uh, you know, what they're trying to say won't come out so um, naturally. Um, they'll think too much and they'll be too hesitant. And you can see this in elements of culture where, um, where they were taught or where students were taught grammar and they had to acquire grammar. It's been tested and grammar is either right or wrong and that sort of thing. And to a point, yes, it's easier to assess the grammar, the vocabulary in that respect, but it's not as creative. It's not as um, spontaneous when you're speaking. Um, and you can see where students have come from a, an environment where they've been taught the grammar of English um, but they've not been supported with their speaking. Um, so it, 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 it's quite telling. And those students that come from that sort of environment, you need to be extra doubly careful <laughs> um, when it comes down to feedback. And so this is why I always write down um, certain phrases or words or expressions or any elements which are good. So you can say, wow, you've done really well here and here. Your pronunciation was great. Just a few minor things to correct here. And can you can correct, you know, can you correct this phrase here? Can you correct that phrase there? And that will build that confidence. And you have to just be very slow and patient. Um, uh, and they'll, they'll achieve what you set out to achieve. Um, provided that they're they're happy to um, receive that feedback I suppose anyhow um, now um, it can be kind of difficult if you're um, working with the students and they don't want to communicate um, they don't want to speak they don't want to go through that process of sharing their thoughts and ideas because it can be um, a little challenging um, and what, what do you do in those res uh, in those situations well it, it depends on how much you're uh, willing uh, to uh, drive the students to to change themselves but I suppose if students are unwilling to change then I don't think there's much you can do um, apart from being patient and sympathetic. All right, um, any questions from anyone here? Uh, none in the chat so far. Well, let's have a look on Twitter. If there's any chat, um, nothing on Twitter, on Facebook. It's a very quiet uh, week. Not many of us around this week. Um, just a few here and there. Um, anyhow, any in the chat? Let's have a look. Nope, nothing in Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. Oh well, not to worry. Well. We could finish it a little, little earlier. Um, anyhow, let's have a look. Mm, one thing I wanted to share with you was um, what I ended up doing last week. Um, as some of you know, last week was my birthday. Um, and one thing that I ended up doing was actually going to um, a bookshop in my hometown and this bookshop they had books piled high as you can see in this picture um, and uh, you had to negotiate your way through <laughs> um, you know through a, a valley of books I guess so 
books were piled up and you had such a small place to get through um, and eventually um, managed to get through and find my way through and I found some interesting books. Um, I was more interested in the um, language section, the dictionaries and slang and and that sort of section. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I found some quite historic uh, books related to language teaching as well. Um, now, um, another thing I ended up doing last week was, uh, let's just zoom in. Um, I met up with a friend um, or, well, uh, a previous student who I taught online. One thing about teaching online is you don't actually see the person face to face. And it was kind of odd um, meeting this person face to face because we kind of had a double take and said, are you such and such? And he said, are you Martin? Yeah, yeah, okay. And we, we kind of understood what what was happening there and we um i managed to take him around where uh eastbourne and what have you and it was it was great it was lovely um and it was nice seeing one student that you taught uh, online having to meet them face to face because uh it, it that barrier that that digital barrier that you have can be um so difficult um, and then finally, uh, another thing that I ended up doing over the weekend was um, visiting Oxford, and um, this was this was lovely. Um, going to Oxford, having a look at the architecture and and that sort of thing, and uh, yeah, it was really nice. Um, uh, getting cold, not so many people out <laughs> in in the city at the moment because it is cold. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely uh, weekend. So that's what I ended up uh, doing in the end. Right, now, um, if there's any final questions, we'll call this one um, done for today because there's not many people here. Um, but again, thank you to those who had joined. Um, so yeah, let me know. Uh, if you've got any questions, that would be great. Um, and one thing that I do want to mention is, um, if you can, um, it would be greatly appreciated if you could. If you could, um, it would be great if you could support a uh, my, um, what do I call it? Um, well... Um, a sort of place where you can show your support and, and that sort of thing. It'd be great uh, if you could buy me a cup of coffee or something like that. So, um, you know, um, there's a few stats and what have you. Um, let's see, my posts, this recent post, um, support, um, so uh, this one here is about um, having the opportunity to buy a cup of coffee for me um, and it would be great if you could um, and I'll share this um, uh, in the, well, in the comments. So bear with me. And then I'll finish off with a poem. So this is me um you can support by buying a book or, or that sort of thing um and you decide uh, entirely up to you so if you can that'd be great yeah so you can show your support and uh any support no matter how little that'd be wonderful um anyhow right um so i uh, i want to finish off with a poem um so today's poem, let's have a look. Um, I don't have my poetry book with me today, but I'm going to have a look online. And I'm going to choose a poem about uh, for remembrance. Um, and obviously, uh, Remembrance Day is coming up. Um, it seems fitting to have a poem um, 
related to remembrance. Um, so let me just have a look at one poem. Right. We've got a few. Okay. All right, now I'm going to read a poem which is quite fitting for um, remembrance. And this one is called uh, Remember Me. Um, it's by Harry Riley. And it's a poem for Armistice Day. Um, anyway, um, let's begin. Um, so, Remember Me by Harry Riley. Remember me, duty called and I went to war, though I'd never fired a gun before. I paid the price for your new day as all my dreams were blown away. Remember me. We all stood true as whistles blew and faced the shell and stench of hell. Now battle's done, there is no sound. Our bones decay beneath the ground. We cannot see or smell or hear. There is no death or hope or fear. Remember me. Once we, like you, would laugh and talk and run and walk and do the things that you all do. But now we lie in rows so neat beneath the soil, beneath your th feet. Remember me. In mud and gore and the blood of war, we fought and fell and moved no more. Remember me. I am not dead. I'm just a voice within your head. Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, quite a touching poem. Um, right. So um, thank you ever so much for everybody who has joined uh, today's live stream. Um, thank you ever so much for all the support. Appreciate it. Um, thank you for being ever so patient whilst I ate my tuna and mayo sani and had my hula hoops um, and my coffee. Really appreciate it. Um, so I will see everybody here with episode seven episode seven next week and um, as always um thank you ever so much for your support and your uh uh dedication and i appreciate everything take care uh stay safe um and i'll see you next week eh? um happy teaching bye bye <laughs>